There might be some pretty big names on this must drop players list for week six. We do have a pretty good sample so far. We're hitting around the 10 game mark. Some teams are well over the 10 game mark at this point. So we have a pretty good understanding of who is struggling early on and who isn't. So I wanted to give you guys seven players that you should absolutely drop for week six of fantasy hockey and going forward until they either pick up their play or start to show any type of significance going forward. That that being said, let's get right into the video. And starting us off, we have Shane Gosses Bear of the Detroit Red Wings, currently 59% owned. What happened in the last seven games with Ghost, guys? He was absolutely lights out to start the year. And in the last seven games, he's had zero points and it was a healthy scratch against Montreal. Now, I understand we've seen the immersion of Wallman on Detroit, especially in a power play sense. But Ghost is still continuing to see time on the power play, the fourth most among all Detroit Red Wings. And they just seem to be constantly blending their defensemen on power play one and power play two. We've seen Moritz Sider moved up and down. We've seen Ghost moved up and down. We've seen Jake Wallman added. Petrie's been on the power play as well. But Ghost has absolutely fallen off of a cliff in the last seven games. Shooting percentage is still really high. And we're seeing a little bit of regression, I think, in that Detroit power play. In three of his last five games, he's played under 18 minutes time on ice, which is also concerning because this is a guy that, again, his value depends on his production. He's not somebody that you are going to add on your team for his peripheral stats. There are much better players like that available to you if you need players with better peripherals. But with Ghost, a lot of his value just comes to power play and point production, and we're just not seeing that right now in his last seven games. And it seems like Wallman is being the beneficiary of seeing more power play time. So for me, Ghost is an absolute must drop in 10 team leagues and some 12 team leagues, depending on how scarce your defense is. We all knew this was coming. Jonathan Huberto, he's now under 50% owned, currently at 47%. He's got three points in his last 10 games. Like, I normally don't have a problem on holding and staying patient with players that I know are elite, especially guys like, you know, Huberto's a good example, and then I have been patient up until this point. And another guy that's been struggling recently is Johnny Goudreau, who I think is going to turn around. The real issue with Huberto is the fact that he doesn't do anything peripherals-wise, and again, is a guy that depends on his production in order to see value. Not only is Huberto not producing, but he's being punished for his poor play. He's been benched in multiple games now. He's been taken off power play one. We all saw that clip on the weekend of Huberto on the bench just being completely and utterly frustrated and fed up with his current situation. His hits per 60 have even taken a hit from 2.9 down to 1.3, which is, again, something that we saw and we enjoyed with Huberto was the fact that he'd get you around 70, 80 hits on top of being a high-producing player. This Guys, this is going to continue to happen, and this is going to continue to go forward if Calgary does absolutely nothing to try and help this guy. There is no point in punishing him for producing at such a low rate. The entire team is struggling. You look at a guy like Elias Lindholm as well, but with Huberto, it's just the fact that he does nothing outside of his point production that really helps your team, and you're just seeing constant zeros on the score sheet for Huberto. So for me, he's a must-drop right now in 10-team leagues especially. Some I'd even say 12-team leagues at this point. Like, if you want to hold on him in deeper leagues, I completely understand. It's hard to kind of drop that guy in deeper leagues. But even some 12-team leagues, like, if you're holding on this, just be aware that this is going to continue and it's going to be painful for the next little bit until Calgary changes something. Up next, we have Matty Beniers of the Seattle Kraken, 46% owned. Seven points in 16 games isn't terrible, but it just seems like he's going through a sophomore slump. His shots per 60 are down from 6.4 to 5.2, and this may not seem that big of a significant drop, but the fact that Beniers was a low volume shooter to begin with is just even more frightening for fantasy owners his hits per 60 are also down from 6.9 to 4.6 it seems like to me Beniers like I said is going through a little bit of a sophomore slump we see this a lot in second year players and with Beniers having such a small sample to begin with it was kind of hard to evaluate him going into his second year as it is with most rookies going into their second year he just seems to be getting a ton of minutes still around that 19-20 minute mark but he just doesn't have any type of peripherals or any type of production to show for it so far so he just seems to be a very low event player and going forward you're definitely going to want to look for somebody that is going to either be contributing in the peripherals category whether it's shots hits or blocks or just having a guy that's going to be able to produce at a high rate and so for me going into week six Matty Beniers is a drop in 10 team leagues especially and most 12 team leagues 
Up next is Jake DeBrusque of the Boston Bruins. Five points in 13 games played. We saw a big jump in his production last year, and I think part of the reason because of that was the fact that he was able to play in top six with some very highly touted players. Unfortunately, he's been moved down to line three right now, and he's on power play two. And some people may look and say, well, him playing on power play two isn't that bad. But if you really look at the numbers, he's only seen 18 minutes and 33 seconds of power play time. In comparison to the power play one guys on Boston, every single one of them is above the 50 minute mark except for Charlie McAvoy and the only reason why he's not above that 50 minute mark is because of the fact that he was suspended for four games so that just shows you how much power play one sees in terms of time on ice versus power play two in Boston right now on top of all that we've seen a drop in his shots per 60 down from 10.67 last year to 7.65 this year and then his hits per 60 down from 4.7 to 3.6 this is not that big of a drop off he still seems to be hitting but the real issue is his shot rate really kind of dropping off there. And now that DeBrusque is not seeing any type of top six talent around him, he's definitely struggling because of this. Up next, we have another Seattle Kraken, Jordan Eberle. He's 30% owned. He's got four points in 13 games. His, whether or not you roster Eberle is completely reliant on his production. He did have a 63 point season last year. His shooting percentage is really low right now, but again, his value is portrayed based off of his production. Seattle just seems to play whoever is going. We know that they roll their lines one through four every single game. He does see around 17 minutes, still average time on ice, but with Eberle, again, he just doesn't seem to be producing right now. We might be seeing some regression with him at 33 years of age. He just might be slowing down a little bit in terms of his production. I just think personally, there are better options in terms of 12 team leagues for Eberle. You are looking for a guy that's going to get you a ton of peripherals or somebody with a really high shot volume. Like in this situation, I would much rather have a guy like Eli Tolvanen, for example, who again, seems to be shooting the puck just as much as Everly is, and then adding a ton of hits on top of that while still seeing relatively the same production. So that's what I mean by there are better options available to you guys. So for me, Everly is a must drop in 10 and 12 team leagues. Up next, we have Elvis Merzlikens of the Columbus Blue Jackets. And I know that there is some value in having goalies that have a lot of volume, but with Merzlikens at 27% owned, he's currently one in six in his last seven games with a 892 save percentage and a three goals against average in those seven games games he's also starting to lose some volume as well we saw Daniel Tarasov potentially be able to kind of cut into his volume early on but due to his injury we haven't seen that I believe Spencer Martin is now the backup he hasn't been great either and that's simply because of the fact that Columbus is the third highest in goals against right now for Merzlikens his real only value is the fact that he gets a ton of saves every single game and I understand that you know the goaltending situation right now is not great but he's 39th in goal saved above expected and he only has a one start in his last three games. I think it really depends on your goaltending situation and how things are looking for you going forward. I think you would just be much better off trying to stream a backup every single week than hold on to Merzlikens just because he's giving up so many goals right now, guys. It's unbelievable. And he's just really tanking in terms of value in that sense. And it's just the volume that he's playing on Columbus right now just isn't worth it. Finishing up our video, guys, we have John Klingberg of the Toronto Maple Leafs at 19% on this really reflects how he's been playing as of late. He's got five points in 14 games, which isn't terrible for a defenseman, but he's also had zero points in his last eight games played. The peripherals are not enough to hold on to this guy. Just drop him and stream a defenseman for the week with a better schedule. Somebody that's going to get you more peripherals, more hits, more shots, more blocks. One of the three. He's just providing zero value right now, and he's even been taken off power play one. We've seen Morgan Riley play more and more on power play one as of late. He was a healthy scratch against Calgary the other day and he just has a zero upside right now I would again highly recommend dropping him and either streaming a player or picking up somebody with better peripherals that is going to do for this video guys thank you so much for watching leave a like and comment down below on who you think is an absolute must drop right now for a week six of fantasy hockey it's very possible we see a lot of these guys bounce back later on in the season but they're just hurting your team so much right now and there's such better options and it's not like a lot of these guys maybe Hubert that have a lot of upside going forward. But again, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Have yourselves a fantastic rest of the day.